What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. And I am Kia Casey. And this is another edition of the Casey Crew. Welcome. Yes, welcome, guys. And I just want to shout out before we start to a couple of people. Shout out to everybody that came out to our 100th episode last week. Yes, shout out to you guys. What an amazing show. <laughs> um, we had so much fun. Our 100th episode at Tau. Mm-hmm. 100 people. Uh, we just had a great podcast and, you know, after we turned it to a party and we danced and we just met you guys, the food was amazing. The drinks were great. Shout mm-hmm. to Remy Martin. The shout to Naima. Was everything. Yes. Just just shout to everybody. We had such an amazing time. So yes. thank you guys so much for everybody that attended. It, it was so lovely. Man. Thank you, Remy Martin, for keeping the drinks flowing. Absolutely. It, yes. it was such a great time. And if you missed it, a lot of people I know were mad that we they missed it. You know, it sold out so fast. So we're doing another show this is our annual february show every february since we've done this podcast we've done a show yes and it's february 18th it's at sony hall in manhattan all right now you can go to ticketmaster for tickets ticketmaster and definitely check us out this will sell out fast uh it's february 18th so we have a little bit of time we have a little, what to, close to two weeks yeah uh, a little over two weeks. a little over two weeks so two weeks it will sell out fast don't wait to the to you know a lot of people wait to the, the, the you know a couple days before and be like ah, i missed my ticket yes get them but now. i understand them though that's my style I know. like buy tickets at the last moment make plans at the last moment and then be disappointed right. when nothing's available try to get my hotel room at the last moment so i understand you guys but then afterwards we get the emails and the dms like can you make space for one more can we fit you know another couple in vip can you right. look us out once it goes, it's gone, and we yes. don't really have the power because it's the venue. And That's right. It's fire regulations and things like that. So, if you're thinking about going, if you want to come out and spend the night with us, get your tickets now. Right, absolutely. So definitely get your tickets in. Hopefully, my voice will be better then. Yes, it's I've had better. this perpetual sore throat. I don't know what's going on. Thank God that my voice stood up for the um, the hundredth episode live podcast. Mm-hmm. I was hoping and praying it didn't go. It's funny. It's like, it's a little sore. It doesn't hurt terribly, but you can really, really hear it in my voice. Yeah. You can't hear it in your voice. Do. Yeah. You can't hear it. Anymore. Yeah. But you guys will survive. I'm or maybe sure. just put something in your throat that'll just go down smooth and just coat it. <laughs> what? What? I was talking chloroseptic. What are you thinking about? Hmm? Man, I, you make me second guess everything that I say with you. I what? promise. What? I just what? You keep, said your throat is Continue. Hurting. Thank you. Thank you. Moving along. Okay. You know what I wanted to discuss uh, today on this podcast? What's that? Um, the company you keep. Okay. All right. And that's going to be the name of the podcast. I like that. I just thought about that. The company you keep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got a company you keep. And the reason I say that is. You know, just talking to people, and we're going to talk about the company you keep in relationships, but I want to take it out of relationships for a little bit. I really enjoy hanging out with people that have the same aspirations Mm -hmm. or more knowledge on a subject than I have. Okay. It really pushes me to be a better person. Mm -hmm. And before we go into the relationship, like um, my, our partner in real estate, Caesar, Mm Mm-hmm. Um, he knows way more about real estate than I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, he owns over 600 units. We own about 23, 24. He owns 600 units. So speaking with him, I love to pick his brain about real estate, Mm -hmm. you know, just because I honestly, just things that I want to know that I don't know, you know, transactions that I might not have done, or maybe I did wrong, or maybe there's easier ways to get around things. Better ways to do things. Because there's levels. There's levels. We've done real estate for years. Right. Um, not too long after we got married, we started investing in real real estate, but there are levels. Right. And we're at one level and he's at another level. Correct. Like you said, he owns 600 units and with that comes more experience, more knowledge. He's had more failures and have learned from them than we have. So right. he's an amazing person to keep within your company because Mm -hmm. you can always pick someone like that's brain. You can learn from their failures so you don't have to take the same pitfalls. Absolutely. And I enjoy that. I enjoy picking people's brain that has more knowledge of of things that I don't necessarily have. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes with relationships too. And, um, We were talking the other day. I don't even know how we got into this conversation. Yeah. We were talking yesterday. I don't even know how we got into this conversation. I do. Oh, really? 
Yeah. Well, I, well, before you, you we tell us how, I, w- I would say this. We we talk a lot. To each other, you mean? Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. But yesterday. We're just big mouths. No, no, we no. We just talk a lot. No, no, we do. But yesterday, we had a long drive. We drove out to Long Island. It was traffic. It was rainy. It was nasty. We were just cruising. We really had nothing to do. Um, And while we were driving out there, it reminded me when we were kids. Yes. But I think it's a little bit of both. One, because that was our own stomp, our old stomping grounds. Yes. Well, we're, um, for those of you that this might be your first podcast listening to, if you just, you know, clicked on the link or something like that. I'm originally from Brooklyn. Uh-huh. And when I was 14, I moved to Queens. Uh-huh. When I was 15, I transferred high schools and I transferred into Rashawn's high school. And that's where we met. And he's originally from Queens. Absolutely. Um. So... That is where, you know, we spent a good portion of our youth, our teenage years, Queens, Long Island, and whatnot. Right. So we were at our own stomping ground. We were driving, you know, through Long Island, through Queens yesterday. But that wasn't what made us feel like, made me feel like a kid. We were having great conversations. Mm -hmm. And we always have great conversations. But usually it's about, you know, we talk about something. We talk about the kids or we talk about. You know, a a podcast or we talk about something. Whatever is going on in our lives immediately. That's like close to us or upcoming or that we're experiencing or um, things like that. But yesterday was just random talk and we were just talking about a whole lot of random random talk. talk. But it was fun and interesting. You know, we were just talking about so much. And one of them was about, uh, you know, other people's relationships and just how we feel about the company we keep. Mm -hmm. And I was and I told you, I said, um, I really enjoy and respect talking to people who are in relationships, you know, like. Or spending time with them. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, um, yesterday we were at a dealership and we were talking to a a guy at the dealership and the guy at the dealership was talking about his wife and how, how long they were together Mm -hmm. and their kids and everything. Right. And it made me have a real connection with them, Mm -hmm. you know, and I had that connection because it just felt like, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it, 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 it inspired me to be a better husband, you know? And, and um, I'm fixing it. I don't want people to say our mic is foggy, but it sounds a little foggy. Let me see. Let me see. I gotta buy new mic wires, baby. But anyway. You can hear it in your headphones? Yeah, I heard a little buzz. But it inspired me to be better because I'm like, wow, look how he's talking about his wife. It made me happy and it mm-hmm. it, it almost became a competition because now I want to tell him about my wife. You want to outwife talk him? Uh, yeah, I want to outwife talk him. <laughs> and he's outwife talking me and we're outwife talking each other. Uh-huh. So it was like, it was just a great conversation and it made me feel like, you know, the company that's around me, like if I don't have any friends that that do this, but I used to have friends that were around and they were playboys. They were out there to fuck chicks and smash awesome. and knock chicks off mm-hmm. and tell That's stories wonderful. about that. And I don't have that around me now. And I prefer that. Like I prefer not having that conversation and that around me because it's not me. Do you not have that around you by circumstance or by choice? By choice. Mm-hmm. By choice. Like it's kind of like everybody around me. I want to have the same goal and not to say that I don't have any single friends, but the people that are around me have to be on the same level in the same mind frame and the same way of thinking. Mm-hmm. And that's want the same things out of life. And that's family and that's, you know, uh, financial and that's growing and, and, and being a better person and that's being spiritual. And that's what I want around me opposed to just, you know, something else. But before I re- before I didn't re- even think about it, but now I think about it more and I'm like, I want people around me that have the same way of thinking, you know? What do you think is the difference between before and now? Why do you feel as though you didn't think about it before, but you think about it now? I think one, because I grew up. Mm-hmm. I think um, I think before I really didn't know what I wanted in life. What do you mean? Um, and when you say before, how long ago was before? Maybe 10 years ago. Uh huh. I, I don't think I knew what I wanted in life. Like, you know, you just you just want money and you don't care about anything else. But then when you get when you realize what life is and what life means to you and what you want out of your life, Mm -hmm. your way of thinking kind of changes. Like 
I don't care about anything. I care about my happiness and my family's happiness. And I care about the positive energy around me. And what creates that positive energy is the people around me that's positive. Like if, if I got a, a friend that's around me and he's always talking about smashing bitches and knocking, or smashing chicks and knocking <laughs> chicks off. It, it doesn't, like it doesn't. You're crazy. It doesn't fit into my life. You know what I mean? It doesn't fit into my life. Mm-hmm. That's not what I'm on. Well, let me ask you this. Yes. Because, you know, the partial side of me says, well, while I understand what you're saying, can't you have friends that have the same aspirations as you or similar? Correct. And friends that are, you know, knocking off chicks yeah. in their spare time? Like, can't you have both? Can't you decide what you're influenced by and what you're not influenced by? Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not about being influenced by it. You know, nothing, nothing, nobody can influence you to do anything or influence anything that you mm-hmm. think So I just want to dissect it. So right. if it's not about it's just the about, influence, then what is it about? Okay, perfect example. I can, I can have a friend that's a drug dealer, mm-hmm. right? I don't want him around me, not because... But that's not godly, so that's a totally different thing. Uh, so a lot I mean, of, neither is knocking, not knocking chicks. chicks. But it's not a matter about being godly. It's about the people that are around you. Like, I don't want a drug dealer around me, let's say, right? Because that's not my mind frame. I don't want to be in that zone. I don't want to be around somebody that's talking illegal things, things that are not pushing me to be a better person. I want to be around... But I think that's an extreme example because there's so many things left about being a drug dealer. It's I mean, not it's, godly. I'm just, it's illegal. You have someone around you that can put you in a dangerous physical environment. So there's 10 other reasons why that can be rationalized. I want somebody so that's going to push me, push me to the next level, push me to be better, that I can look at you and be like, damn, you doing this? I want to be better than what you're doing. Or damn, I didn't you mean see better it that than way. what you are, not better than what you're doing. No, better than what better than what I'm doing. Let, let, right, right, that's better than what you're doing. You, correct. Rashawn Casey. Rashawn that, Casey, correct. The way you, how you just said it was better than what they're doing. No, 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 better than what I'm doing. So for right. instance, all right, perfect example. The guy yesterday uh, talking about his wife and his kids, right? Mm-hmm. Why are you laughing at me? I had an itch. Gosh, my thigh itch. I can't itch my thigh. You weren't itching your thigh, Rashawn. No, it's my thigh. Look how... You weren't itching your thigh. Look, I know my You're penis... distracting me. I know my dick is long, but I'm reaching on, down. Come on, I'm reaching... Look, sitting look, here... I'm reaching down to I'm my thigh. I'm trying to concentrate on our conversation, and you're sitting here scratch... Okay, can we just continue? All right, fine. All right, now, I was saying the guy from the store... He was talking about his wife Mm -hmm. and he was talking about his kids and he was talking about his dog and how happy he got and how much life it brought him and what they did on their first date and what they do when they go out. Now, you know, I, it made me want to brag about you even more because now it became a wife competition and a kids competition. But it also made me think, damn, he does that with his wife. Maybe I should try that. You know, he goes out with his wife here and he does this. And I'm like, damn, maybe I should try that. And it wasn't a competition or a battle. It was just dialogue with two married men that I thought was dope. Mm-hmm. It's just like, you know, I might tell one of my married friends, you know what? Me and my wife took a, a walk in the park and it was just an, an, an amazing walk in the park. And he might be like, shit, I'm going to take my wife. In maybe I should go in. for a walk in the park. As stupid <laughs> as it sounds, it's, it's positive influence. <laughs> Maybe I should be inspired by the birds and the joggers. No, it's and, the truth. And but the it's, lake. But it's in, it's positive reinforcement on, on certain things, mm-hmm. which I like and I like to keep around me. If, if I always have people that's giving me positive energy and pushing me to be, do better than I am now and pushing me to do better financially and pushing me to be a better husband and pushing me to be a better father and pushing me to be a, a better uh, dog owner, whatever it is, um, it really sinks in with you. Well, life really is about evolving. Correct. And I feel that no matter how wonderful your life is, it can always evolve to a higher plateau in a sense. Um, It's important to surround yourself with positive people Mm -hmm. because I feel that energy begets energy. Correct. And when you put out good energy in the world... The world gives you back good energy. Right. I find that I'm a really happy person. Mm -hmm. And when I walk out the house and I have a smile on my face, Uh I find that people smile back at me, Mm -hmm. which 
kind of nourishes my day. It nourishes my daily experience. Um, two days ago, I got into an Uber. I was meeting you in the city. Uh-huh. And the Uber driver said to me... Fuck. I'm sorry. What? What? We were supposed to call the Uber driver. You left your charger in that Uber. We were supposed to call him. Yes. Did yes. He call you That's back? a very expensive charger. You were supposed to take care of that. Did he call you back or no? No, he didn't call me back. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. So that Uber driver, when I got into the car, he turned around and he smiled at me. So I smiled at him and then I laughed and then he laughed and I said, what was that moment about? And he said, you know, he said, I drive Uber all day, Uh every day. And he said, the people that get into my car usually take away from my spirit. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? He said, people get in the car. They make sure that I have the address right. Sometimes they ask about the route and then they're either on the phone. They're, you know, punching away or typing away, at, you know, their iPad or their phone or, you know, whatever. They're occupied. They're busy. Mm-hmm. And some of the time they're nasty. Most of the time they're barely decent. Some of the time they're decent. And very, very rarely do they ever seem happy. And he said, you got into my car and... It feels happy. Mm -hmm. Like you have a nice expression on your face and it just made me feel good. So I just wanted to smile at you. Right. And I said, really? I said, that kind of shocks me. He said, yeah, a lot of people don't get into the the car with a nice attitude. A lot of times they're just rude or whatever. So we got into a conversation about that. And this guy taught me a lot in that hour that I spent in traffic in his car. Mm -hmm. You know, he said that sometimes he's driving and someone will give him the middle finger and he won't respond negatively. He won't roll down the window and curse at them. He won't flip them the bird back. He says that, you know, sometimes I look at them like, wow, maybe you're having a horrible day or maybe something just happened to you and it's putting you in that bad mood or in that bad spirit where you're taking it out outwardly. So, you know, I might feel bad for someone like that instead of, you know, wanting to behave aggressively towards them in response. And I don't know, that was like a little bit of nourishment for my mind. And um, I, I believe, I believe in that. I believe in that. But as a human being, it's hard sometimes to look at to look at the bright side of things and to give people the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. And um, the conversation that I had with him kind of reinforced that, you know, but see, but I, I would have to say, and this is going to sound rude and nasty. What? You're an Uber driver, right? Mm -hmm. Your job is to drive. Yes, when I come in the car, I speak and I'm polite. Hey, how you doing? How's everything? Oh, you good? All right. Yes, I'm going to 45 Hudson. Okay. Now, when I get in the back seat, I got I'm I'm working. I I don't I, like it's not it's not my job to ask you how your day is and no, to have a conversation. You're misunderstanding. I got to take a phone no, call. No, 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 no. Yes, I'm texting away. But when I get in that car, I'm polite. That hey, is how not you doing? what he meant. Oh. He didn't mean that he wants a conversation. Oh, because I got from everybody to do. that got into the back of his car. No, that's not what he You're meant. just a talker. He's... N- You're going to talk to anybody. Me? Yeah, you, who, me? Yeah, you. <laughs> just a fucking talker. But hey. No, it's not that. I'm a friendly person. Mm-hmm. And um, I love to see people happy. One of the things that he did say is that he's like, you know, I drive and I try to find happiness in everything. And I said, me too. What do you mean by that? He said, you know, I'll be driving down the street and... And I'll see a person on the corner about to cross the street on their phone smiling Mm -hmm. as they're talking. He said, and that makes me happy. Mm -hmm. You know, I might drive by a restaurant and see a group of people, you know, sitting at the table in the window talking and smiling and laughing and cheering and with their glasses, you know, cheering. cheering. And um, he said that just it makes me happy. I like to see people happy because. It makes me feel good. Right. He said, I try to find happiness in everything. And I said, wow, so do I. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, I relate to you um, when it comes to that. So I felt, I don't know, by the time I got out of his car, I felt good. He did something for my day. Our Mm. conversation did something for my day. And I don't know, 
truthfully, when I got out of the car, I said a little prayer, a little, I don't know, maybe 10 second prayer, thanking God for just having met somebody that made you happy. That reinforced something that I already face. believe, you know, not even right. just putting a, somebody could tell a joke and put a smile on my face. It was a little bit deeper than that. And we talked about a lot of things, but it was really just reinforcing things that I already believe. It's important to be happy. And sometimes I feel, I feel as though people's circumstances prevent them from being happy. Mm-hmm. But I think part of happiness is deliberately being happy, telling yourself that you're going to be happy right. in spite of the negative things that may happen to your life or that may happen to your day. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to smile and be infectious right. in a sense because I feel as though it really does come back to me. Now, what you were saying about the company that you keep. I had a friend in college uh-huh. that also taught me something. What's that? Um, it was actually my friend Tamara mm-hmm. who... We're still friends to this day. And if she's listening, she's probably going to call me afterwards like, wow, you remember that conversation? And the answer would be yes, because it impressed upon me. When we were in school, she said, Gia, I love being friends with you. And she was like, she was my, if I've ever had a road dog, Uh it was her. Right. If anything ever happened and... I was put in a position where I had to defend myself Mm -hmm. or if I ever got into an argument with somebody, she would be the one that would probably even step in front of me to handle that. Right, right, right. Or if she didn't step in front of me, she'd be the one that was right next to me like, yeah. You know, like I always felt as though she was kind of like a sister to me. Right. And she always had my back no matter what. Mm -hmm. But that was Tamara. Anyway. She said to me, I really love having you as a friend. Right, right, right. And I said, well, yeah, I love having you as a friend too, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't go anywhere without each other. Right. And she said, no. She said, my grandmother taught me that when you decide on the friends that you have around you, try to have people that have talents, skills, and abilities that either inspire you or that you hope to achieve in life. Mm -hmm. Keep friends around you that can take you to another level or that you can learn from. And she said that during our friendship, she's learned so much from me. Mm -hmm. And that taught me because when she said that, a light bulb went off. Mm -hmm. You know, when you... When everybody around you is trying to get to, say, a place maybe where you are in life, Uh then your job in their lives is to pour into their lives. Okay. But if that's your place, then who's pouring into your life? Right. Who's nourishing you? Who's teaching you? Who's influencing and inspiring you? So it did teach me to try to surround yourself with people that are greater than you. Correct. And not greater um, in every aspect, Mm -hmm. but that maybe have or maybe possess a greater attribute Mm -hmm. than you may possess in a certain area. Kind of like what you're talking about with Caesar. And it's wonderful to be humble enough to be able to look at another person to say, you know what? You're, and you don't actually have to articulate it to right, the person. Right, right. It could just be a thought that you have. But to pretty much be able to say, you know what? You have a greatness about you that I don't possess that I want to learn from. Correct. Absolutely. Because that's really what this whole world is about. Even something as um, partially shallow as social media, right. as social media can be. You know, I think that a lot of us are on social media and looking at other people and how they move and... um Maybe their accomplishments and their greatness. And it's nice because it's accessible from that person right. directly. It's not from um, a second hand form of information. You know, if you're Rashawn Casey and as Rashawn Casey, you're posting your day and you're posting your thoughts or you're posting your pictures or your accomplishments and a person that follows you is able to look at those things. They can draw inspiration from what they find to be great about you. There are wonderful 
inspirational women that I follow that have amazing accomplishments or amazing attributes that I view as greatness. Gotcha. And, um, that's where social media can be a wonderful thing. Sometimes social media gets a bad rap. Um, but that is, and it's right from the horse's mouth. So that's something that that's good about it. But when I do have the time to keep company of others, Uh um, I do like for it to be with, um, powerful, intelligent, People that, and it does, it, intelligence has nothing to do with education, but just intelligent, smart people that I can draw from. Absolutely. I, and, you know, that's one thing I would say. I really, really, really uh, like positive things in people around me. I mean, if somebody's around me that's no good and up to no good, I don't want that energy around me. I don't mm-hmm. want that energy near me. Energy begets energy. Absolutely. And even the people that I, I try to follow on social media, I try to follow people that encourage me to do better, whether it's uh, financially, whether it's spiritually, whether whatever it may be. I try to follow those people. And I just wanted to put that out there because I wanted you guys to think about that when you have that energy around you. You know, a lot of people always say, yo, I'm not doing good in life or, you know, this is fucked up. And then I, and I always think like, damn, you, like who, who are, who's around who's you? Your, who's your circle? Who's your circle? Who are the people around you? Right. And when I asked you about... um whether you thought you'd be influenced, like can't you be partial in the company that you keep? Mm -hmm. I was asking really to just be objective. Uh But if I had to answer that question, if you posed that question to me, I would tell you that I believe that people are influenced Uh even when they don't necessarily believe that they're being influenced. What do you mean? Because... Having positive people around you can uplift you in ways that you don't necessarily interpret for yourself. Mm -hmm. You may not even realize the effect that they're having on your life. Mm -hmm. But the positivity, the fact that you're around people that are saying positive things, making positive moves, moves that are happy, that are are family men that are um, successful, that are kind, that are godly, you inadvertently see the fruits Mm -hmm. of having that mentality or having those skills, abilities, that outlook on life, et cetera. Uh And it may subconsciously make you want to strive for the same things. Gotcha. You may not put it together in your head that way, but- like I said, it inadvertently can have that kind of effect on you. The same way that if you are around more negative people, like say a man that cheats or maybe um, someone that's hustling the wrong way. Right. Or, you know, someone that's just not kind or just has a bad outlook on life that feels deserving, that feels entitled, that isn't humble. If that's your circle, you may say, OK, yeah, I can be partial, but their bad ways may just have a way of rubbing off on you right. and make you maybe share. Like when they say something negative and maybe you don't want to be confrontation, maybe you're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh-huh. you're kind of allowing that. It may put little deposits in your brain, which isn't good. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So I think that it's just, it's always a good idea, no matter how you look at it, to keep good company. Absolutely. And and I just wanted to start off with that before we got to the email of the week or whatever. Just, you know, that was talking to them yesterday and, and just talking to you and, and talking about good company just just put a lot of positive energy into my space. And I just wanted to explain that to people. I'm not know? saying to cut off your boy from the block. Yeah, You not, know, not, that you grew up with. Not that. say that at all, but. <laughs> yeah, not at all, but just be mindful. Absolutely. That, that's kind of the point, right? This week's episode is brought to you by Beachbody On Demand. It's 2019, which means new year, new you. But for most people, that also means overcrowded gyms. Beachbody On Demand is an easy-to-use streaming service that lets you instantly access to a wide variety of super effective workouts ranging from bodybuilding to weight training to cardio, yoga, even dance workouts. You can do it anywhere, even in your living room, your bedroom. It doesn't matter. You can do it in the kitchen if you want. With workouts as short as 10 minutes that don't require extra equipment, you could be finished working out in the time it takes you to drive to and park to the gym. All right. Now, 
it's perfect. You know, if you're in the house and you just need a little bit of time, you know, because sometimes doing an hour workout is difficult. So you can just do a 10 minute workout. How dope is that? All right. Right now, listeners can get a special free trial membership when you text KC Crew to 30 30 30. You will get full access to the entire platform for free. All the workouts, the nutrition information, and all that. And with their new 14-day results plan, you can lose up to nine pounds in the first two weeks. Totally free. Again, just text KC Crew to 303030. I got into an argument today. Okay. Um, with Killer Mike. Who is that? Uh is he a DJ? No, 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 no. That's that's Big Mike. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Killer Mike. <laughs> Killer Mike is a rapper from Atlanta. Okay. You, I'm sure you heard his, his uh, joints before. He, he was on the Kryptonite. I be on it all day. Uh, every, oh, yeah, you yeah, catch yeah. me mm-hmm. in the air. Killer Mike, he's a good friend. He's a, he's a good dude. We got into an argument. It was a nasty argument, but it was a positive argument. Meaning... It sounds like a thorough contradiction. No, meaning, you know, it's it's like it was two people that respect each other that just had difference of opinions. Okay. So it was loud and nasty, but it wasn't disrespectful. Okay. You, you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Like sometimes if you argue with somebody, it's disrespectful yeah, yeah, yeah. and you leave with like, fuck you. And you like, fuck you. But we left giving <laughs> each other a pound because we, we, we were Wait, this on the is same in person? Page. Yeah, this was in person. Where were you? Uh, on a breakfast club. Oh, okay. 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 And uh, we got into an argument about schooling our kids. Okay. And he was saying, and, and Killer Mike, he, he does well. He's he's a rapper. Uh, he's a big fan of, of us and, and, um, and some of the stuff that we do on Instagram. And he was saying that... Um, that his kids go to public school. Uh huh. And he was saying he puts his kids in public school because uh, he feels like, you know, public school, and I don't want to fuck up his words, but basically he was saying public school is, is um, he feels like it's good for kids and it taught him where he, who he is today. And, you know, he, he, he went to an HBCU and we were talking about that. And I was like, you know, mm-hmm. I said no disrespect, but I don't feel the same way. <clears throat> what do you he, mean? That's general. And it, and he was like, well, what do you mean? And I was like, look, I said, you know, I'll start off from me when I was a kid. I said, uh, when I was a kid, my zone high school was Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson is a public school, public high school. That was the first high school in America to get metal detectors. That's right. how bad it was. Yes. Um, that was my zone school. It was a couple blocks away from me. My parents, uh, middle class parents worked hard to make sure that I didn't go to Andrew Jackson. And I went to St. Francis Prep. Mm-hmm. And I said, because of that, I think. It pushed me to be who I was, part of the reason who I am today. I said, because if I went to Andrew Jackson, I would be concentrating less on books and more on safety, more on getting in and out. It was it was a bad area. So it w- my focus would have been a lot different than everybody else that I was in school with. OK. And I told him that um, and he was like, "Nah, that's not true. You know, um, you know, uh, you know. Um, you know, these kids go to these schools and they're taught how to be, uh, you know, to, how to work, you know, to be public servants. And they're taught how to be, you know, to work for, air, you know, air aircrafts. And they're taught how to, um, you know, work at nursing. And I said, that's the problem. Wait, wait. In, in public in schools? Public school, right. Okay. They, they're, taught, they're, they're taught a trade. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And I said, that's the problem. And he was like, well, what's the problem? I said, well, they're not taught a trade. Well, some of them are taught trades, and some of these schools that he was talking about in Atlanta, that their, their kids are taught trades. Okay. And I said, that's the problem. I said, the problem is I don't want my kid to learn a trade, per se. Mm-hmm. He was like, well, what do you mean? I said, I want my kid to learn how to be a billionaire, a zillionaire, something that's outside of a trade. And I said, there's no disrespect to being taught a trade. I said, Sometimes I feel like where we come from, we don't necessarily shoot for the stars. Right. Mm-hmm. You understand? We we shoot for a lot lower. Mm-hmm. And I said, I want to shoot for the star so that so that the kids know that they can make it to the star. Right. But let's be clear. OK. Well, let me finish. Let me finish. Before okay. you said, before you, and, I, and I said, you know. Um, I don't want my son to be taught a trade to do something you know Mm -hmm. i said i want to take that mentality out of what they think Mm -hmm. and i'm not saying that's for everybody's way of thinking but i i say this all the time if my son wanted to be a garbage man or to work in sanitation that's fine but i want him to think outside of that i want him to think about 
fuck just being a sanitation worker. I want to. I want him to own a fleet of. Trucks. I want to own a fleet of trucks. Right. And that's what I want these kids to start thinking. Mm-hmm. Fuck saying. You know what? I want to. I want to be a pilot. Think about how I can own my own plane. You know, mm-hmm. not to say that these are easy goals because they're not. None of these goals are easy. I mean, what we do is not easy. What anybody does is not easy. But that's the mentality I want people to start start thinking. Right. But let's be clear. And I, oh, and, and this is the other thing. And I also said a lot of public school teachers and I'm cutting you off because I just want you to hear everything. A lot of public school teachers. And he was mad at this. I said, I don't necessarily think all of them do their job to the best ability. And he was like, well, what does that mean? What does that mean? And, you know, Charlamagne was like, oh, my mother's a public school teacher. I said, all right, that's all good. I didn't say all. I said, but for some teachers who have 40 students in the class and that are overworked, they're not necessarily going to give the same energy as another teacher at a school that only has to teach six students. That's getting paid way more. Their salaries are getting paid and they feel like they're, they're more respected. So it's like anything else. If I feel like I'm more respected, I'm going to work harder because I feel like I'm doing it for a reason. Mm -hmm. But if I feel like you're underpaying me, you're overworking me, I'm not going to work as hard. Just my opinion. Right. But it's not necessarily about public school versus private school. Uh Uh-huh. I think that your discussion with him should have just been about educational goals, period, regardless of where that education is gotten from, because... I'm sure that there are private schools Uh that kids go to and they don't get the maximum experience from those private schools. Uh They may not be the best just because parents are paying to send them there doesn't guarantee that they're going to be the best. And I'm very well aware that there are public schools that exist that provide a phenomenal education right but this story came from and this is where it came hold from on, I, I, didn't hold give, on, I didn't even give you a backstory there's no backstory i'm just saying based on what you said it's not necessarily about whether your parents are paying for the school or not there are public schools that i would send our kids to but they're not our own school so right. our kids can't go right um and we pay hell a lot of taxes and people in those towns pay hell a lot of taxes so that their public schools can rival the private schools. So it's not really about public versus private. It's about the integrity of each specific educational platform, period. Well, this is where it came from. Let me give you a quick backstory before we have to break out of here. It came from... We got to do an email before we got to break out of here. I know. It came from black and white. What right? is that? And um, we were talking about, uh, you know, black kids dating... Uh, white kids and dating somebody outside of their culture, right? Where'd that conversation even come from? Um, Something that Nick Cannon said, it did, but that's where it came okay, from. Okay, got it. And I told him, I said, you know, you know, because they asked me how I felt and I said, I, I said, really? I said, I, I just want somebody that's going to treat my daughter well. Or your son. Or my son. Mm-hmm. I said, I, I don't care if they're black, if they're white, if they're purple, if they're right. green, if they're yellow. I honestly don't care. Mm-hmm. Treat my daughter well. He was like, no, well, you know, I, I want to keep it all in black. I want, you know, everything, you know, I want my daughter to date a black Did person. Did he sound like that for real? He didn't, but that's just me. <laughs> and, you know, ahead. and Charlemagne said, said said something similar. And I was like, well, I don't that feel That they, like. wait, they want to keep their kids dating the same race? Yeah, they was like in the Asian community, you know, most Asians want Asian people to, mm-hmm. you know, to, you know, to stay dating Asians. And he was like Jewish community, you know, the Jewish community want to keep, you know, Jewish people dating Jewish people. And I was like, I get it. But that's just a matter of following suit. Right. <laughs> that's just a statement. If there's no, um, if there's nothing positive to support that thought, then that's just like really an empty statement. They basically, they basically said they want to keep the bloodline going. It was just a lot, but I don't agree. I, you know, I've pretty much, I care about people. Exactly. You know, and if somebody disliked me because I care about people, then fuck them. Because I want who's going to treat my daughter the best and give my daughter the respect. And it's about my, love and chemistry. My whole thing was I, I told Charlemagne, I said, Charlemagne, you know, you don't live in the hood anymore. You live in a nice area. Your kids go to private schools. I said she has more of a chance of her dating somebody that's outside of her outside race. of her race just because of the school she goes to. Mm hmm. You know, and I was like and, and that's when it came. It's like, well, just because she goes to a, a private school doesn't make it better. I said. I don't know about that. And I said, the reason I say that is because 
Madison School, for example, has a lot of shit that colleges don't have. But that's but see, that's it. That's the thing. That's the integrity of her specific institution. That is where she goes. But, you, you, you but it's me? not necessarily only because it's private. Like today, I just got back from a meeting with her college counselor. Correct. And I had to ask her, I said, are your services available at other schools, for instance, the public school in my town. Right. She said, I doubt it. Most schools just have a guidance counselor and a guidance counselor has a hundred things on their list that they're responsible for. Right. College counseling would be one of them. She said, me, I am an exclusive college counselor. That is my responsibility. That is what I'm paid for. That is my obligation. So if you have a question about a college that I don't have an answer to, then I am going to get on the phone with that college or that university and find out the answer. That is what I do. My job is to go above and beyond and provide a very unique, specialized service for the students of this school. And that is what you pay for by Mm -hmm. choosing this school. So that school is exceptional. It's extraordinary. It offers something like that. I don't believe that all private schools offer that. Mm -hmm. And I believe that maybe some public schools may offer that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right, right. It's not a public-private situation. It's about the institution that your child goes to and the choices that they make within that school. And based on those choices, based on what you know, that's how you decide where you want to send your child. Absolutely. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So we got into an argument about I mean, we were just, we were basically trying to both say, you know, we're trying to better our community and help our community. But the reason I even told you that it was it felt good to argue with somebody. <laughs> OK. And not be nasty. Like. I mean, argue, Well, that's argue. about maturity. Well, matter of fact, we were a little nasty, but not disrespectful. <laughs> right. Not disrespectful. But that's about maturity. That's when two people... Respect each other. ...come together, right. who respect each right. other, have a difference of opinion, and can respect right. each other's opinion. At the end of the day, we don't have to agree, but we just exercised our minds a little bit. And I may have even opened you up to considering something you may not have considered before Correct. and you may have been able to do the same for me not to say that you changed my mind but you know it broadens a little bit differences of opinion are important you know Absolutely. i love when we do this podcast and people dm email or they might even leave just a small comment saying that they agree or disagree and they may give a little explanation why because it's interesting i love to be opened up to the possibility of being wrong and Considering that, contemplating that, uh, because you learn a little bit more yeah. when you you can't be you can't be closed off. You can't be a closed book. You have to be open because, you know, when you're so proud, you have so much pride that you think that you're right all the time. There's no room to grow. Absolutely. You know, the growth is in the disagreements, in the arguments, in the debates. That's where we grow. Absolutely. Well, I mean, you said, you, you know, you love when people open you up and maybe I'll open you up later. OK, what's the email? All right. Support for today's episode also comes from Ritual. There's no quick fix when it comes to better health. It's all about starting good daily habits and actually sticking to them. Enter Ritual, the obsessively researched vitamin for women. Ritual's essentials have nine of the nutrients most of us don't get enough of from our diets. From D3 to Omega-3, all in easy-to-take capsules, all right? Now, for better health, doesn't happen overnight. We all know that. Start the year with Essential for Women. A small step that helps create a healthy foundation for 2019 and beyond. Visit Ritual.com slash Casey Crew to start your ritual today. That's Ritual.com slash Casey Crew. Let's get to the email of the Seriously. week. Seriously, What? You love me. Just a little. I thought this was uh, funny, right? And, and we, we talked about this probably the first five episodes, right? Uh, her name is Naomi. Hey, Envy. Hey, Gia. I was wondering how you both approach having the talk with your kids. My husband and I are Haitian American, sac passe, ma boule, and the topic of sex was taboo in our households. Growing, uh, growing up, I remember being told that girls are gasoline and boys are matches. <laughs> my twin girls are turning four, and my son is turning six. When is the best time? What would be the best approach? One, uh, which one of you actually spoke to the kids? Is there anything you would have done differently? I've listened to a lot of episodes, but uh, a lot of episodes. 
Miss says, I listened to a lot of episodes, but not all. Oh, okay. If you previously addressed this in another podcast episode, can you let me know which one? I pray for continued success in your marriage, health, and family. And I hope that everything you both touch turns to gold. Oh, thank you, Naomi. Love you guys. Thanks, Naomi. Yes, we did talk about this. I think it probably was one of our first five podcasts. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what it was called. Probably something inappropriate if I know my husband. Mm -hmm who titles the podcasts. Um, but if you just go back and take a look and read the um, read the titles, you may be able to infer from that which one it is. But it was early, early on, like maybe one, two, three, four, five, right. I'm thinking. Um, but we'll give you an answer, but just refer back to that. Right. Uh, just, you know, for more in-depth explanation. So to answer you, Naomi, I wasn't a part of it. I didn't want to be a part of it. Um, I could be a part of the next one. The next one. The younger ones now. The oh. Five, the five, four, and two. So Gia had a conversation with Madison and Logan uh, together. Mm-hmm. And they spoke about the birds and bees. And Gia was just honestly, honest and upfront. Now, I never had a conversation about the birds and bees with my parents. Right. To this day. Right. Uh, have you? I didn't have a birds and bees conversation. Uh-huh. Um, as I got older, I felt more comfortable talking to my mother about sex and sexuality, things of that nature. But I was grown. Go that ahead. was, I might've been 19 gotcha. or 20. Gotcha, so gotcha. I was grown. I was already sexually active and um, we would discuss sex matters in mm-hmm. a sense. But no, I ne- we, my parents never sat me down and had that conversation, but I wanted to have that conversation with our kids because, and it's funny because while we were talking to the guy at the dealership yesterday, uh-huh. that came up. Mm-hmm. He said that his wife was about to have the talk with their kids. Oh, hold on one second. Uh, I ordered something. Let me just see if they got it. You got to be kidding me. Hello? I'm so we sorry. We taping the podcast right now. That's why. But I seen your name pop up and I thought you had some good news for me. He, did sorry. he get it or no? I'm assuming he thought that this was important. All right, yeah, yeah, so... Yeah. All right, well, I'll call you after the podcast. All right. Okay, so I need to know why that phone call needed to be answered. No. Is it because my birthday is in two days? Yeah, I'll tell you, but it didn't work out. All right, so... um I was trying to buy you something that has been sold out for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I thought I could get my hands on a vintage piece. Okay. But I couldn't get my hands on it. So that's why you had to take that phone call. Yeah, but and I wonder why she, our whole podcast. But I wonder why she called yourself. She called my cell. I see my phone ringing. Who was that? My cook up. And then she called yourself. Don't uh, see, I take your phone so you don't see who your hookup is. And uh, she called yourself. I was like, damn. Well, I didn't tell her it was for a surprise. But anyway, I'll tell you about it later. Okay. All right. Yeah, but um, you're saying that your, your parents, your saying. birds and the bees and your oh, parents, um, and you said uh, you talked about it early, later on in your relationship. Oh, OK. So, I- so his kids are eight, um, 14 and 16, about to be 17 in February. Uh-huh. And he said for his 14 year old, you know, he talks about girls, right. he likes girls, right, right, things right. of that nature. And he wants to have a talk with him. And he asked if I think that it's appropriate. I said, well my opinion appropriate probably would have been more along the lines of like 11 Uh or something at that age. I feel as though that's when we begin around that age could be 10, could be 12, but around it could be nine. Even Mm -hmm. you start to notice the opposite sex and your curiosity begins to blossom a little bit. And not only to satisfy it, a curiosity, but also because you don't want your children to get misinformation from their friends right? and start learning things the wrong way. Right, right. When you sit them down and you talk to them honestly about sex and you explain to them why we were created to have sex uh-huh. and that sex is rooted in love and that's why it's so filled with pleasure and that's why... Through that, we're able to procreate. If you take them through that journey and then teach them the highs, the lows, the pitfalls, the mistakes, and everything. The STDs, the babies, uh huh. Yes, that was a pro and a con. Okay. Right there. But yes, um, when I spoke to my kids about it, and if you want to hear the story again, just go back to that podcast. Um, I don't want to 
bore people that have already heard it, but I took them through everything. And I think they were around that age. Madison might have been. Do you remember how old they were? No, they were about 11-ish, 12-ish. If she's 17 now, this might, we talked about it maybe two or three years ago. Um, so she might have been, they might have been 12 and 10, uh-huh. something like that. Logan was playing baseball at the time. So right. yeah, about 12 and 10. Um, I told them about everything. Literally from every type of sex that could be had. I remember I walked out. <laughs> sex with using every orifice. Right. Um, again, love. And I talked to them about all the different sexualities, mm-hmm. hetero, homosexual, um, transsexual, just everything. I took them through a journey and they were able to ask questions freely. We had snacks and they were like, what and how does it go and what's the motion like they really got an education and it came from me so there's no misinformation right in there if anybody comes and tells them something crazy they'll be able to say no that's not true Absolutely. and they got it from a good source so i do think that it's important to talk to your kids about it um your kids are six and how old are sean um i'm going back right now <laughs> They are, my twin girls are turning four and my son is turning six. Okay. I think you're way ahead of the curve Mm -hmm. right now. Um, I would give it quite a few years. I would give it um, till, yeah, maybe 10, 12, that age. And then I think you'll be safe. I don't think it's something that you need to talk about it now, but I definitely think it's something you need to talk about eventually. Okay. Today's episode is brought to you by Lisa. Resolve to rest this new year, right? A quality night's sleep helps you recover from distractions, uh, prevents burnouts, makes better decisions, improves your memory, and overall makes fewer mistakes. It's not marketing, it's science. Now, to design a better mattress, Lisa leveraged over 30 years of experience and hundreds of hours of testing to develop the perfect mattress for all the body shapes and sleeping styles. Now, I have a Lisa mattress at work, and we have it here. And when I say I get a great night's sleep, I get a great night's sleep. Now, start 2019 well-rested. Get $160 off a Lisa mattress at lisa.com slash Crew and use promo code Crew at checkout. That's L-E-E-S-A dot com slash Crew promo code Crew. I use it at work. It comes in a small box, so it's easy to deliver, and it puts me right out. Shout out to Lisa Mattress. I just want to do one more email. Okay. And then we got to get up out of here. All right, now this one is for you. Uh, and you, you spoke about this before. I don't know if you spoke about this on a podcast, but I, I, I've heard you talk about this before. Okay. <laughs> Should I go to a sperm bank and have a child on my own? Oh, okay. Hey, guys, I want to start off by saying I love you guys. I love your podcast. Your Thank family you. is beautiful. My name is Michelle, and I'm 33 years young. Hi, Michelle. I have one daughter who will be 13 on the 9th of December. Mm-hmm. Obviously, if you do the math, I had my daughter young. Now she had a daughter at 20. Uh, still the best decision I ever made. I've been having baby fever for years now. I uh, was with my daughter's dad for nine years. We were engaged, but I found out he was cheating on me so many times and I ended it. Mm -hmm. My daughter was seven to eight at the time. Then I met someone else. We were together a little over three years. We were engaged too, but the same thing happened. I found out he was cheating and I broke up with him this past February, 2018. Now I've been single for almost a year and I'm still having baby fever. I work for the city of Philadelphia as a bus driver and make pretty good money. So money is an issue. My question is, should I go to a sperm bank and get pregnant that way? Who? Well, that's a heavy question. Mm-hmm. She's only 33 years old. Um, this is how I feel. Because this is what she says. Uh, she also said this. She says, because if I find somebody, then... You know, that could take five plus years. My clock is ticking. On yes. top of that, I've been on birth control since my daughter was two months old. I don't know what effect that has on mm-hmm. my body. Uh, and then she says, I'm sorry for the long email, but I know Gia loves details. Yes, I love me some details. Um, Her name is Michelle. Yes, Michelle. So you're 33 years old. You already have one child. So God bless you mm-hmm. for that. Go the to the sperm way, bank, Michelle. I tell you, go the to the sperm bank. The way that I look at it, go yes. to the sperm Hold bank. Find second. your Superman and what you want. You go there. If you like a Boris, go find a Boris. 
<laughs> if you like uh, DJ Envy, you find somebody that looks like me, it's going to be very hey, difficult. You. Uh, if you like uh, um, whatever you like, you like Morris Chestnut, go find yourself a chocolate Morris Chestnut. You can mm-hmm. find what you want and you pick the baby daddy out. You can have what you want. <laughs> that's what I say. You I ain't got to wait for no From man. what I heard, I think they only show you um, half mm-hmm. of the donor space, maybe half of the nose up. Mm-hmm. Um, so that you can get some type of idea what they look like. Uh-huh. But my opinion is this. Um, at 33, uh-huh. I'm an advocate of freezing your eggs. You are. Yes, I'm an advocate of freezing your eggs. Because at the age of 35, that is when most specialists believe that Hold on a minute. Don't answer that. Mm-hmm. I don't know who that is. Um, that is when most specialists believe that the quality of our eggs begin to deteriorate. suffer, mm-hmm. deteriorate, suffer. They're not as good as when you're in your 20s. When you're in your 20s, you're in your prime reproductive phase. Correct. So if I were single and I had no children and I'm 33 years old, Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to start getting my money together Mm -hmm. to freeze my eggs because optimally, I would want eggs younger than 35 years old Mm -hmm. to freeze so that when I decide that I do want to get pregnant, I know that I'm not dealing with 36, 37, 38, 39, 40-year-old eggs. Gotcha. I'd rather have younger eggs because... For all intents and purposes, they are better eggs. Not to say that you can't have a perfectly fine, healthy, sustainable 37, 38, 39, or 40 year old egg. Mm -hmm. You can. We have. I'm a living example. But if I had my choice and having babies was high on my priority list, Mm -hmm. I would definitely freeze my eggs. Some insurances cover it i know that ours for instance does not nope but some do so you might be able to do that at little to no charge that you would have to incur okay Mm -hmm. you're not necessarily asking about freezing eggs you're talking about just going ahead to a sperm bank and having yourself artificially inseminated just get a little nut (laughs) um it depends on how important having a baby is to you. You're using the term baby fever. A lot of women have baby fever. Right. But this is what I would consider if I were you. You have so many years to find the love of your life that will treat you right and that you can ride off into the sunset with. That would mean that if you have your first child, then you can go ahead and have your second child using a sperm bank. If you meet your Prince Charming, then you would be having another child. If you chose, I probably, I think that you probably would. Um, Then you would have three children Mm -hmm. by three different fathers. That's just something to consider. Two and a half. What? Yeah, the third one, there's no, there's no uh, father. (laughs) It's a whole father. It's just a whole nut. But he's just not there. It's just a nut. But, that may be something that is important to you. And you can That lie. may be something that is not important to you. She can lie to the kid, be like, you know your be daddy always called you. I'm not, you know your daddy I'm not tell. suggesting that it is important. Um, for me... Wait, wait, she's from Philly. She can be like, you know your dad's Kevin Hart, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> for me, yes, I don't know that that would be important, but for some of our listeners, they may... Hi, Logan. Hi, my baby. How are you? What's up, Log? So what's up to the people? All right, get up out of here. We um Baby, doing podcasts. You have, you have to beat it. Okay. All right, go. Right go, now, though. Go, go. I love you, Not, I love you too. My dog. <laughs> go ahead. Close the door tight, baby. Okay. Okay. Um, for me, if I didn't see an end in sight, in other words, if I didn't feel optimistic about finding my forever person and I wanted a child now, I believe in creating your own destiny. If I were single... And I didn't have any children Mm -hmm. and I was 33 years old Mm -hmm. and I had no one on the horizon Uh and I was looking at that biological clock. I would have no problem being artificially inseminated Mm. because for me, having children and being married was at 
the top of my priority list. Correct. I personally wouldn't have been able to see myself as an accomplished woman, meaning accomplished in um, my career or anything and children not being a part of that. Right. So you're at a great age for having children. You're settled. You're secure. You can take care of your own children. So if it's high on your priority list, I wouldn't really think about everything else. I would just go for it. I would go ahead and do it. And that's me speaking personally. That's me, Gia, saying. Right. That if it were me and I was single and I wanted a child and I was 33, I would set my own destiny. I wouldn't wait for a man to come along to fulfill that destiny and give me that option of having a child. Mm -hmm. So for me, I wouldn't care if I had a child with one man and then I was artificially inseminated. And then if I found somebody else and I wound up having a child with him, that was just a trajectory of my life and that's how it played out so i would go for it if you can afford it and you're stable do what makes you happy because you're right when you talk about that biological clock and you talk about the way that life kind of unfolds you're 33 let's say that you're lucky enough to find your forever person this year right let's say you're 34 by that point if you wanted to have a baby under the circumstance of marriage It takes, I would say, most people between a year and two years of being together before they decide that that's the person that they want to spend their rest, the rest of their life with. So now you're hitting around 36 at that point. Then if he proposes, you're talking about maybe another year before you get married. That's 37. Mm -hmm. And then most people want to enjoy being together and being married before They have a baby. Now you're talking possibly 38. At 38, you may have a little bit of difficulty conceiving. We're trying to conceive now, and I had difficulty conceiving. I didn't get pregnant as quickly as I did with my other five, where I needed zero help with. As soon as we decided that we wanted to have a baby, we had sex that night, and I literally was pregnant immediately, almost with all of them. Yep. At 38, that didn't happen for me Mm -hmm. as easily. So we're in the process of in vitro right now. We're at the tail end. Mm -hmm. A lot of you guys have asked for an update. I'm going to have the embryo transfer. We'll give them the update next week. In about two or three weeks. Just a little slight update. Just so you know. So I'm saying from personal experience, at that age, it may not be as easy. And you're dealing with older eggs. So that's really, really something to consider. So I just want to give you all the information from my perspective. And that's how I look at it. So do you want to turn around and have a baby at 38? And that's if you're lucky enough to meet someone that will be the person you want to spend the rest of your life with, say this year. You know, if it's next year, you're put off maybe by another year. Some of the other things that I time frames, maybe less, but you're still in that latter thirties ballpark. So if you want it bad enough and you can afford it and you can take care of that child and give it all the love in the world, I say, go for it. Absolutely. And, and we wish you the best and keep us, uh, just, just keep us updated to whatever you're doing. I would love to know. Yes. All right. Well, it's time to get up out of here. Yes. Again, don't forget, uh, we're doing a live podcast February 18th. It will sell out fast. So we're inviting all you guys, if you can make it, come on down to New York City. And this weekend, we will be in Atlanta for Super Bowl. It's Gia's birthday, so we'll be celebrating the whole weekend. Yes. So if you see her, wish her a happy birthday. Shout her a holla. And hopefully we can hang out with <laughs> you guys. Shout me a holla. Shout you a holla. <laughs> Shout you a holla. Uh-huh. So we'll get to see you guys in Atlanta. All right. And I'm DJ Envy. And I am Gia Casey. And that was another edition of the Casey Crew. Toodles.